one thing to understand is we've been leading up to this idea of, okay, so what is this market? What does it look like? Um, and from the point of view of the NIH, you know, is it big enough? Is it real enough? So let me start with um, an example that actually was brought in, that was actually developed for um, an assessment within the Office for Technology Commercialization. And they, they started well. And some overall high level secondary, mar secondary research type statistics. Okay? Nice graph shows the older you get, the worse it gets. Okay? Then their, their segments, what are they going after? Okay? Because the thing on the left is everything. It's, you know, the fact is there are other treatments for that particular condition. Um, not everything, not everybody's going to need this particular approach. Okay. So they put together kind of a mix and match set of things. Um, and so the idea of innovators, and in this particular case, it's a, it's a condition that, um, that baby boomers have that affects mobility over, over time. Um, and, and this is a non-surgical alternative. There, there's some good things in here. But then he moves over into what looks like a normal curve, right? A normal, regular old thing, you know, statistics, negative 101, right? This is an adoption curve that was initially developed in Iowa by an agriculture economist looking at um, the adoption of seed, new seed corn varieties by Iowa farmers. And what the, this agronomist determined was that it kind of follows a normal curve and that you start on the left with early adopters and then you've got um, sort of the next level, you might think of them as um, um, in this case, did he break out? Yeah, then the innovators, and then you've got more mainstream. This Luddites thing at the far right is not the terminology the agronomist used. But you can talk about laggards as a, a typical term. Okay. So what these guys did was they said, oh, those are our market segments. Therefore, you've got a whole bunch of people that have this condition. We will, our first segment will be uh, the innovators among baby boomers who have this condition. And, um, and then our second segment will be the early adopters. And between the two, that's about 3 million people. And we're going to charge 50 bucks a pop. So there's 150 million, 150 million market. Great. Now, I'm, I'm actually working with these guys. So I'm going to tell you what I told them which was, if you were one of my students, I would be giving you a negative grade for this analysis, okay? There's, he's not connecting really what's going on with the segment with the real numbers that might go with it. So a more rigorous approach is, yeah, you do do the top-down work. He also didn't do, uh, they also had some issues around their competitive analysis. So what is that size of the total market? Okay. What is the so-called addressable market, which is the part that you would be dealing with, the segment that you would be dealing with? What are the trends going on in that market? And then who else is serving it? And how, and you know, really, where's your niche in all this? But then you're also going to do the bottoms up approach. You're going to say, who's my initial segment? And the phrase that sometimes used is my beachhead market. And how big is it? And what kinds of trends do I see there? And what's my penetration rate? Okay. How long will it take me to get there? Okay. Now when I say me, I mean the product. You might in fact say, I'm, you know, somebody else is going to do it. 
it's going to be an established company with licensing, but some sense of what that adoption pattern might look like. This requires help. Okay. Um, this is a very abbreviated example. It's actually not in the healthcare space, um, but it, it, the the point here is you end up with some some key dimensions that you're looking at in terms of the overall market, um, what the trends are, and then what segments are you going after. And then you go into a little more detail. Um, and you might end up with a set of projections, which lays out over time what might adoption look like. This is. Uh, you know, now we're moving to some stuff that's a little more technical. And so that's where seeking out some resources can help. Um, one of the people we have visiting here in the audience is Mike Finch, who leads the, um, the Medical Industry Leadership Institute Valuation Lab program. How's that for a mouthful? And you guys look at 15 to 20 technologies a semester, right? And, um, and it's basically a bunch of MBA students that go at it. Okay. Um, within MinCore, my program, we, help, we can help people with this. Okay. The coaches from MinReach, a lot of them will have background with this. Okay. When we do the, uh, the value proposition workshops, one of them will be focused on market assessment. So you can do, have some hands-on help, okay? And Dale, you guys help people with this, right? The Office for Technology Commercialization, okay? So nobody's expecting you to become a market expert or a finance expert, but it is around starting with that active imagination, tempered by real feedback from real people that then you start translating into uh, some sizing of what the opportunity is. 